studies section 3 philosophy language and human knowledge introduction this study section will broaden your knowledge on the concept of knowledge as it relates to philosophy and language especially in the attempt to understand the universe you will first examine the place of philosophy in the analysis of knowledge and then go on to examine the function of language in the acquisition and dissemination of knowledge. Learning outcomes for study section 3. When you have studied this section, you should be able to understand what knowledge is from a general and philosophical perspective. Describe how language facilitates the dissemination of knowledge. Explain how knowledge enables the understanding of the universe knowledge from a general and philosophical perspective. You have been examining the various dimensions in which you can understand the relationship between philosophy, language and communication. In this study section, you will want to further expand this relationship by looking at the concept of knowledge. What is knowledge? Knowledge is often defined as a belief that is true and justified. This definition has led to its by methods that rely solely on the correctness of answers. In other words, how does knowledge contribute to the role of philosophy in understanding the universe? What is the relationship of knowledge to the concept of philosophy? In what ways does language assist in the furtherance of human knowledge? The philosopher's interest in the idea of knowledge is an enduring one. The branch of philosophy which explains this interest is called epistemology. Epistemology derives from the Greek two words, epistem, that is knowledge, and logos, that is theory or study. Thus, epistemology is the theory or the study of knowledge. The epistemologist is concerned with the meaning of what it means to know anything. When you claim the knowledge of, say, God, what are you talking about? When you say, I know that I will pass PHI 208, what are you talking about? Is it possible to know anything with certainty? How do you know what we claim to know? These are some of the fundamental questions that interest the philosophers of knowledge. Figure 3.1 Hewler diagram representing a definition of knowledge. The philosopher's interest in what constitutes knowledge is justified by the fact that many people take the term knowledge or what it means to know for granted. For instance, you make statements like, I know that I will pass PHE 208. I know that God exists. I know that my future is secured. I know my husband. I know President Obama. I know how to kill a pig. Michael knows Lagos. My teachers knows philosophy and so on. In the first place, Serious attention to these statements reveal that knowledge is often confused with other terms. If you say, for instance, I know that God exists. Is it not the case that you really mean to say I believe that God exists? In other words, you have actually confused knowledge with belief. Secondly, what we often claim to know often turn out to be false. Again, if you consider another statement, I know President Obama, this statement assumes that the person making it is so intimately acquainted with Obama that she or he can conveniently predict every turn of Obama's personality. However, more often than not, we discover that people are not so predictable. For the epistemologist to say, I know that so and so implies that what you claim to know 
must not turn out false. If you say, I know that I will pass PHE2OA and then eventually fail the course, did you actually know that you will pass it when you made the statement? This interest in knowledge has led philosophers to search for adequate criteria of knowledge. In other words, what are the standards a person must fulfill before you can actually say the person knows that so and so? The standard answer to this question is that for a person to know so and so, such a person must fulfill the three conditions listed below. The first is that what the person claimed to know must be true. This means that one can't truly claim to know what is false. The second condition is that the person must believe what she or he claims to know. It becomes a contradiction to say, for example, I know that the sun is hot, but I don't believe it. Lastly, the person must have a good reason for believing what he claims to know. A person can't just say, I know that so and so, without going further to give credible reasons for making that claim. Epistemology is derived from which language? Greek. Our language facilitates the dissemination of knowledge. The overall implication of these three conditions is that knowledge becomes justified through belief. That is, knowledge is what we have good reasons for believing. Such a piece of knowledge is only justified when it is true or has its foundation in facts. This conception of knowledge, what is often called the traditional definition of knowledge, has become a significant problem in philosophy. For instance, philosophers ask the question, does justified true belief constitute knowledge? In other words, are the three conditions really sufficient for claiming that a person knows something? For instance, they have argued that it is really possible to know something without actually believing it. Imagine that I was attending an interview and I was asked to state the date of the last eclipse of the sun. I was so dumbfounded by that technical question that I just blotted the next thing that came to my mind and I got it without believing that I did. The other situation is that some philosophers have also argued that some form of knowledge is actually possible without justification. Consider the case of those who can reliably predict the rain with accuracy without actually being able to justify how they did it. This calls into question the idea of justification central to the traditional definition of knowledge. The lesson of the disagreement with the traditional definition of knowledge is basically that, according to Scruton, we should draw a distinction between whether a person knows so and so, and whether a person has reason to justify his or her beliefs. The concept of knowledge derives its significance from its capacity to help us distinguish between which of our beliefs are reliable and which we can't depend on. This has significant implications which contribute to human survival and flourishing. What this means is that human beings can't hope to survive and make progress in this world if they can't differentiate between a reliable and unreliable beliefs, that is, if they can't grant their beliefs in facts. In other words, we cannot hope to take significant actions on our beliefs if we are not certain that we can trust those beliefs. To survive at all, I must be able to place a level of certainty on what I believe. I must be able to rely on these beliefs. It seems a far that a person cannot make progress in life if she or he leaves a perpetual doubt. In other words, doubt cannot lead to actions and judgments.
knowledge captures the environment and breaks it down to manageable facts and concepts that can assist the person in coming to terms with the things around him or her. From where does the concept of knowledge derive its significance? The concept of knowledge derives its significance from its capacity to help us distinguish between which of our beliefs are reliable and which we can't depend on. How knowledge enables the understanding of the universe. In this regard, knowledge requires language for effective transmission. This is because a piece of knowledge is useless unless it is transferred to others. In this sense, Language, according to Rita Conan, confers some kind of cognitive advantages of human beings over other species. To make this statement requires that we understand the intimate connection between language and knowledge. Knowledge and its growth are motivated by language. Just as you have seen, language becomes significant because it conveys knowledge and concepts. First, language and knowledge enable humans to properly understand and classify nature for the purpose of controlling it. The second advantage follows from the first. Both enlarge the range of human possibilities through the understanding of nature we achieve. For instance, the process of abstraction allows you to take phenomena out of their immediate context and apply it to other contexts. To abstract, we take the common characteristics of several phenomena. Thirdly, language and knowledge provide a better means of organizing human experience, especially through conceptualization. Finally, language also facilitates information storage and retrieval. This is very crucial in the growth and relevance of knowledge. In the final analysis, Knowledge is a function of language's capacity to divide reality into meaningful segments that makes understanding possible. Effective dissemination of knowledge is therefore only possible when effective communication has taken place. What is language according to Rita Conan? Language according to Rita Conan confers some kind of cognitive advantages on human beings over other species. Summary for study section 3. In study section 3, you have learned that 1. This study section attempts to flesh out the relationship between philosophy, language, and knowledge. We saw that philosophy is interested in knowledge in its attempt to clarify the terms we communicate with. 2. This attempt derives from the temptation in ordinary language to confuse knowledge with belief, opinion, and so on. Furthermore, when we say, I know that so and so, the philosopher or the epistemologist is at pain to argue that what we claim to know must not turn out false. If it does, then we don't really know what we claim. Three, the epistemologist therefore argues that certain conditions are required. These conditions are the true condition, the belief condition, and the justification condition. In other words, for Johnson to know, say, that the sun is fairy, then A. It must be true that the sun is fairy. B. Johnson must believe that the sun is fairy. And C. Johnson must have a reason for believing that the sun is fairy. Four. Knowledge translates into justified true belief. While this definition of knowledge may not enjoy a serious prestige in epistemology, it reveals a fundamental lesson. This is that our beliefs must have a basis in justified fact if they are to serve as the foundation for actions and judgments. 5. We can't just act on the basis of our beliefs unless we are certain that they are beliefs we can act upon. If there is any level of doubt, then progress is stunted. This further tells us that knowledge is crucial 
in the organization of human experience. 6. But knowledge is not even possible except through the instrumentality of language. It is the capacity of language for categorizing the world that gave birth to the human ability to know what the world is like and to advance in this understanding of the universe. Thanks for listening.